Hello. Hello. Are we getting any feedback in the other room? That's okay. One moment, folks. We're just going to get our audio and in order over here. So we're not getting the feedback from the other room. Okay, good. Good. Uh, looks like it is 1 after 11. So why don't we jump in? And as folks join us, they can join in and see where we're at. Thank you, everybody, for joining today. We are recording this, too, so this will be available uh, to folks that were not able to make it but did sign up. And if there's anything that you missed today that you're wondering, uh, you can certainly ask me questions, contact me, or um, you can have access to the recording as well, and you'll be able to see it after the fact. Uh, as you see on our screen, we have the power of your sphere today is what we're talking about. And so we're going to jump right into that. Uh, I'm not going to assume I know where everybody's at in their own database management. I'm not going to assume I know where everybody's at in their own lead generation practices. What we're going to talk about today really has to do specifically with real estate, of course, and specifically with lead generation. So I'm going to ask you to suspend your disbelief for me, if you would. I'm going to ask you to just go with me whatever that little voice is in your head that's telling you, oh, that's not going to work for me, or I don't do things like that, that's fine. When we're done with the meeting, go back to that. But during this conversation, just hear me out while we talk about this, because I'm going to show you some things that I've done over my career. And I've seen other people do. It's not that I created this. It's not that I invented it. I'm, I'm, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm actually doing what others have done before me. So we're going to talk about that. And Alyssa, if you'd be so kind as to go to that first slide. So I want everybody to help, or I want to help everybody understand what the power of your sphere is. And before we can do that, we have to understand what is your sphere of influence? How do we define a sphere of influence? And by all means, folks, if you have comments to add while we're talking, feel free to put them into the chat and we'll address them as we go through it. Your sphere of influence, as I define it, is anybody that knows who you are when they hear your name, anybody that knows what you do when they hear your name. Now, for some of you that are brand new to the business or in the infancy in the first few years in the business, that last part may not be the case. Not everybody in your sphere might not, but might not know what you do yet, okay? And we're gonna address that today. But for the sake of this argument or the sake of this conversation, the sphere of influence is the people that know who you are when they hear your name. They know what you do when they hear your name, okay? And that's so key to understand that. Because if we don't know who we're talking about, how can we possibly leverage that and use that for gaining business? If you go back one slide, uh, Alyssa, the value in building and nurturing relationships, I'm going to define that and monetize it. I'm going to show you exactly what we do to monetize that. I told you in that clip, if you saw it, last year, we measured a 52 times return on investment. That means every single dollar that we put in, we took $52 out in gross revenue. Now, that's not net profit by any means. That's gross revenue. Everybody's going to run their business differently. Everybody's going to have different costs, different profit margins. But I think it's safe to say that if you could find a way to put a dollar into an investment and take $52 out, you would do that. $1,000 in, $52,000 out, or in our case, $11,000 in, $550,000 out, okay? We're gonna set you up for success for building your database. Again, if you've already built a database, great, that's awesome. Maybe this will validate what you've already done or give you a couple new pointers. If you haven't, stay tuned. Maximum success, define your lead gen strategy. We're gonna talk exactly about that. What are we exactly doing? What is our strategy for talking to these folks? 
How do we monitor it? How do we track it? Guys, this is the big thing that realtors often fail at, myself included, for many, many, many years of my career. I could make calls. I could have calls. I could have conversations. I could meet somebody out in public, shake hands, talk about real estate. We could grab a cup of coffee. Maybe we had drinks. Maybe I had a dinner party. Maybe I did things like that. Was I tracking it? Was I tracking who I'm talking to, how often I'm talking to them? Was I tracking which people in my sphere of influence are giving me referrals? Who are our raving fans? Was I tracking how much money I was putting into this? Was I tracking how much time was I putting into this and what my return was? Tracking is going to be your friend. And then overcoming the challenges and objections that we see. We can skip to that next uh, slide and the one after. So I would say that anybody in your sphere of influence, this is the start of the suspension of disbelief because I, what I'm about to say is I know it's already going to make some people feel uncomfortable. Take everybody that you know, friends, family, neighbors. Do you have children in school? Do they go to elementary school, middle school, high school? Are you a part of any organizations there? Are there folks in those organizations that you interact with? They're your sphere of influence. Who are the people that you knew in a past job? Who are the people that you know as your neighbors? Who are the folks that you know in your life that know your name? They know who you are when they hear it. Put them in your database. And what you're going to want to get in that database is their contact information. You're going to want their name. You're going to want their phone number. You're going to want their email address. And you're going to want their home address. Now, you may already have bits and pieces of this. There is no, by the way, there is no perfect database. There is no database where every single person in the database has every bit of data there. I would even go further. Once you get into that, I would get their social media links. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever you use. Put those into your database as well. You're going to want to save that information. Okay. Now, when you are building that database, that's the information that's going to go in. And the job of all of us as sales folks, the job of all of us as real estate professionals is a continuous building of the database, by the way. That never ends. Guys, that never ends. You're always putting more people in your database. When you meet folks at open houses, when you meet folks in a neighborhood or when you're doing neighborhood events, when you meet new people, they go into your database. And you're going to want to consistently go back and get that information. And we'll cover that conversation a little bit as we uh, continue in this conversation. You want to make sure, though, when you start communicating with this database in any fashion, whether you're sending them emails, whether you're sending them text messages, whether you're direct messaging them on social, or you're talking to them voice to voice, and I know that's the scariest one of all, picking up the phone and calling your database. I know, I know this is the part that's going to make you feel uncomfortable because everybody's going to say, I don't like to do that. I don't like to do that. And trust me, maybe there are some of you in here that do like to do that. Uh, I hear it all the time, though. I don't like to do that. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that a little bit. Where, However you're communicating with these folks, you want to be consistent. You want to be authentic, okay? What does that mean? Well, for one, it means don't lie. For, one, it, for two, it means don't puff things up, okay? Be authentic with your database. The best database, the best return on investment from a database will be one that you feed with consistency and authenticity. You want to always come from contribution. The communication with your database can't be, hey, what do you have for me today? It has to be, what can I do for you today? How can I benefit you? What bits of value can I offer you? Does anybody know what a MOFR is? Does anybody know what that is? You can raise your hand, you can put in the comments, or you can sit quietly. That's good, too. A MOFR is make offer for immediate response. Your communication with your sphere should often, if not always, offer MOFRs. What might be a, 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 an offer for immediate response? Does anybody have an example? If you do put it in the chat, I would tell you one is, <laughs> Thanks, Trish. It's just your internet connection. It's not you. You're not slow. Um, a great mofer is the one that realtors have been doing forever. Free market analysis. We'll offer you a free market analysis. 
we will offer you a free report of the value of your home. That might be something. A mofer might be, we're offering a seminar, how to downsize. We're offering a Zoom meeting, what to do as a first time home buyer. Do you have anybody that you know that's been thinking about buying a home this year that could find value in that? There's a number of things you could do. Make an offer for immediate response. Potentially, it could be something as simple as, we're calling because we have a list of vetted and trusted contractors that we work with. We're happy to share them with our clients and our friends and family and neighbors. Have you been thinking of doing a project this year? Would you like access? Feel free to contact me. I'm happy to share names and numbers. It could be something as simple as that. You want to come from contribution. Can we move on to the next? Oh, that's all right. I heard from the other room that we got kicked out. So we'll continue with this. Luckily for me, I brought a whiteboard. Now, hopefully for all of us, we can see that. As we're talking about your database, okay, we're going to do things with the database in a strategic and systematic way. What I'm going to challenge all of you moving forward from today, if you take one thing and one thing only from this conversation, it's that you're going to do strategic and systematic things with your database. You're going to no longer wing it, okay? And I will tell you exactly what we do on this team. Take what you like, leave the rest. We have mandatory lead gen time Monday through Friday. We, being the salespeople on my team, will lead gen between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Monday through Friday. What does lead gen mean? In fact, let me ask a better question. What would be a form of lead gen? Can somebody share that with me? Slow Trish, can you share that with me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was meant I was, I'm not slow. I'm just a slow that. typer. Okay, anyway. Um, so a, one form of lead gen would be uh, calling your sphere, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. What, would, what else would be a form? Anybody else want to share Did something? You, Type in the chat or, or talk, talk on the uh, microphone. I don't want to steal all your ideas. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, that's oh, me. That's I hear me something in the other room. We're getting back online on that other room. So I will tell you this. We're another form of lead gen is text messaging. Text messaging back and forth is a form of lead gen. Direct messaging on social, same thing. It's a form of lead gen. Now, can I tell you what is not a form of lead gen? Would somebody tell me you, something that often people say I'm lead genning and it's not a form of lead gen? And I know I'm going to get pushback on this. I see I, Ryan stepped away. He'll push back on this. Maybe not. Um, a form of lead gen that often is called lead gen that is not lead gen is designing and posting reels gen. on Instagram. Is designing a form of lead gen that's often called lead gen that is not lead gen is putting together stories, posting on Facebook. Why is that? Why is that? What is that? If it's not it's lead not gen, lead what is that that I'm mentioning? It's marketing. It's passive. That's right. That's right. I'm getting feedback, getting feedback on that. that. That's exactly, that's exactly right. right. Yeah, go ahead and mute on your end. That should do it. All right. That is marketing. And the difference is it, you, you absolutely should be doing those things, by the way. Marketing will get people coming to you that you can grab and now put into your database and lead generate with by an ongoing back and forth conversation. This is so key because people can tell me all the time I had a thousand plays on this uh, reel I did. I had 40 likes, 60 likes, 70 likes. That's awesome. That's great. Keep doing it. Put more out there. The one contact you had that you had a back and forth generation is the one lead gen you had that day. The two is two, whatever it is. You want to start tracking. You want to start targeting based on real numbers in the market. How many people do I need to talk to a day, communicate with a day in a back and forth communication that can be text, phone call, or social media messaging back and forth in real time. How many do I need to talk to a day, five days a week, to get the amount of opportunities, leads, business from my database that I need to run my business? 
And my answer is this, is I target 20 per day, five days a week, Monday through Friday. So between 8 and 11 a.m., that's what I do. For those of you that share an office with me and they see me here with my headset on, that's what I'm doing. It's not always a voice communication. Sometimes it's text, sometimes it's social media direct messaging. But please do not conflate and confuse marketing with lead generation. They're not the same thing. You need to do both, by the way. You need to do both. And I would challenge any new agent. If you only had time to do one, lead gen will get you more business. It just really will. Over time, it's been proven in real estate, hands down. So when we're putting those people into the database, we're often going to put something into a CRM, a contact management system. Everybody's going to have their favorites. Honestly, everybody, my favorite contact messaging system, my favorite CRM is the one you're currently using. I don't care. It doesn't matter. And I know there's going to be people that say, Graham, no, you haven't seen mine. I signed up for this one over here, or I built my own over here. And it does this and it does that. That's awesome. Use it. If you're using it, it's the best one for you. I can just say that in my time, the highest performing agents that are interacting with the database and getting business out of it, they have their name, their phone number, their email, all their social in there. They've got all their contact information in there. They keep notes on the people that they talk to. Okay. They will also sometimes use contact management systems to do follow-up marketing and track that as well, which I highly encourage you to do. But if you're in infancy of building this database, the last thing I would want you to do is start spending time and money trying to navigate a multifaceted CRM as opposed to just starting something, just starting a conversation with people, start to communicate with them in this space, do it over and over and over again, build some revenue, reinvest in yourself and your business. Okay. We happen to use the CRM that's proprietary to our company. We use command and we're heavily in there. I track all the notes. I track all the conversations that I have with folks. You want to make sure, though, that you're tracking this. Um, to use this effectively, it's up to you how you work best. Some folks are going to, some folks are going to be able to just keep very diligent notes during the day and then go back in and plug in information that evening. I have mine open and I have my headset on. It's why we're, you know, hands-free or buds or headset. And I'm talking to folks and I'm typing in notes while I'm talking to them. And I, and I will do this and I will show you this. This is a very, this is a very high tech um, way of doing it. So you're going to want to pay close attention. I take my pen and I take a piece of paper. Let's pretend this is a piece of paper. I have a notebook I carry with me every single day. And we're going to see if we can see this. And on the top page, I put a big A. And then I put a big L. And then I put a big N. That's an N, by the way. Can anybody tell me what each one of these letters stands for? If not, I'll tell you. A stands for appointment. L stands for lead. N stands for nurture. Now, however you define each one of these is up to you. Just be consistent. There's not one right way of doing this. For me, as an appointment is a listing or, or buyer appointment that is ready to sign a contract. If we give the right com if we give the right information, have the right conversation, we have an opportunity to sign a representation contract in that meeting. That is an appointment. An appointment for me is not coffee with my friends, although I do that too. That's not an appointment. I'm looking for listing appointments and buyer appointments. Okay. L, go ahead. Thought I heard somebody there. L is lead. Okay. Now for me, a lead is I anybody, they're going to fall into two categories. I track my leads as anybody looking to either buy or sell real estate in the, in the uh, next 90 days or less and everybody else. So for example, if somebody said, I have to get my home on the market because we're relocating out of state for a job and I need to be there in 60 days. Okay, that's a lead 90 days or less. If somebody says to me, you know what, we're going to buy, but it probably won't be before the end of the year, but we do want to st start to have the conversation. That's the everybody else lead. Okay, anything past that for me, the folks that say we might buy or sell in the next few years, my, my kids are going to be done with school, I'm going to get a job promotion, 
whatever it may be for them, that's a nurture. That's how I define it. Wherever you draw the boundaries around that is fine. Okay. I'm not here to tell you right and wrong on that. Just be consistent on it because it's going to be a very important conversation to have later when you're tracking your numbers and your conversion rates. And during the day, what I do is I go down the list. One, I talked to Bob Smith. And if I talk to Bob Smith, I put a check mark by Bob Smith. And then I called Trish Karnowski. And as we all know, Trish never picks up her phone. So I left Trish a voice message and I do VM insert. I'm just kidding. Trish picks up her phone all the time. But if I call Trish and I left a voicemail, I'm going to put VM and I'm going to circle it. That stands for voicemail. Now, when I talked to Bob Smith, he wasn't looking to buy or sell anything and he didn't know anybody else that was looking to buy or sell anything. So he got a little check mark that I talked to him and I left notes such when I was talking to him. And then I talked to Jane Jones. And you know what Jane Jones told me? She knows somebody that's looking to buy a home this year. Oh my gosh, that's an L. And I put one mark in the L. I mean, this is so simple. I do this every single day. I carry a highlighter with me as well. So that then on my paper, I will highlight the lead. And my goodness, guess what else happened? Uh, Jack Johnson called me. Because Jack Johnson, I left a voice message for two weeks ago, and he's just getting back to calling me. And he says, Graham, it's so timely that you called. We're thinking of buying and selling another. We're thinking of selling our home or buying another one. Come on over. And oh, my God, it's an appointment. So I put an A on there, and I put a little hash mark on the A. I'm tracking my leads. I'm tracking my appointments. Does anybody know why? Why is that important to track your leads and track your appointments? You tell me. All right, I will, Carol. Um, thanks for saying anything. <laughs> it's very important to know how many contacts do I need to get a lead? How many leads do I need to set an appointment? This is extremely important because as you go through three months, six months, 12 months, you're going to start to compile this data, track this data, store this data, and you're going to be able to plan your future off of this data. I will tell you with 100% accuracy and honesty, once you've been doing this for a year, you can budget for your next year and plan for your next year exactly how much money you want to make. Once you know your real conversion rates, I need to talk to 20 people to get two leads to get one appointment, whatever it may be. All you need to do now is figure out how much, how many appointments do I have to go on to actually sign a listing contract? How many listing contracts do I need to sign to sell a home? That could be buyer contracts too. Once you know that, you can plan your entire professional career. It all starts here. Let's not get too deep in the weeds. Let's not go too deep into the forest. We'll start with the lead gen because I guarantee you most agents are not doing the basic stuff. This is really basic stuff. Now, let's say I was texting. I'm still keeping that. I'm still keeping that. Let's say I was uh, uh, in my uh, Facebook account and I'm going down the side and I'm messaging everybody in my Facebook account. That's online. I'm still keeping that tracking. I'm still taking those notes. If you create an ongoing back and forth conversation, you're going to know how many people you need to talk to. Okay. It's very simple stuff here. This is not high level stuff. I'm plugging this into my CRM while I'm talking to them. Graham left VM. Pretty simple. Graham left voice message. That's what I type in. Graham talked to Jack. Jack's looking to buy or sell. Graham set an appointment for, and the reason I do it that way is I have other people on my team that are in my uh, database too. And sometimes some of those are contacting some of our people in our database. So I want them to know who was the last one to talk to them. So if Jillian on our team is calling to invite everybody to a client event, Jillian might say, Le Jillian left a message for Jane Jones about our pumpkin event or something like that, right? So we have a long track history of what we're doing and how many people we're talking to. And then as time goes on, Let's say Jack Jones turned into a buy and a sell. That's two transactions. When those close, I've got two transactions and my source of business is my database. And that's how we're going to start to track how much money we're investing, how much time we're investing and how much money we're taking out of this endeavor. Because see, the fastest way to go to uh, uh, get into an appointment and get into a closing is in your database. And this is another point where I'm going to ask you to suspend your disbelief. 
There are companies out there like Zillow. There are companies out there. You name them. We're all getting emails and phone calls from them and text messages that say they can generate leads for us. They've got listing leads. They've got buyer leads. All you need to do is pay this quarterly fee, this monthly fee. All you need to do is pay this percentage and we're going to give you those leads. Go ahead and do that if you like. I don't use any of those. I've never have in my entire business. My entire business comes out of my database and then we do have other sources. But my, the main source of my business is out of our database. And you will see that you need to talk to far less people in your database to get a lead far less people in your database to set an appointment and far less people in your database to get paid than you do to any other lead generation source that exists in this market. There is no other one. That's not talking about marketing guys. Marketing is your social. You're going to still do that. The marketing is going to bring you people that you can lead generate and you're going to turn them into people in your database, in which case you're going to do things like this. Okay. Can we jump to the next slide? So we're going to talk a little bit about, all right, how do we employ these strategies? I've talked to you about calling people. Well, all right, who do I call? When do I call them? How often do I call them? What other ways are we interacting with this database? First and foremost, I'm going to assume that everybody's heard of something around a 33 touch, or if you don't, you can kind of imagine what it is. It's a strategy of how many times am I going to be in touch with the people in my database in a calendar year? And in touch can be phone calls, text messages, social media. It can be invitations to client events. It can be a newsletter, monthly, quarterly, weekly, okay? It can be a lot of things. There's no one right way to do it. I'm going to tell you, though, and this I believe wholeheartedly in, while most of the stuff here on this uh, conversation is a gray area, man, I'm telling you, I think this one's black and white. This one's a hard line in the sand for me. Four of those touches out of the year have to be communication back and forth. Now, in the old days, they used to say phone calls. I still think three of those should be phone calls. I'm open to a conversation back and forth, as long as it's a back and forth conversation via tech, via social media, direct messaging. And you're going to talk to your folks in your sphere. And this is where I'm going to, again, I'm going to ask you, just give me the grace on this one, because I already know what some people are saying. Four times. I'm going to call my neighbors four times. I'm going to call my family and friends four times. They don't want to hear from me. They don't want, they're just going to think I'm trying to sell them something. Well, first of all, if you tell me that they think you're trying to sell them something, stop trying to sell them something. It's, it's that simple. Honestly, there's nothing else to it. Don't sell them anything. Done. Prove them wrong. Come from contribution. We'll talk about that specific conversation and what that looks like. You want to put them on a date on some sort of a newsletter. If you choose, you can go out there and you can hire a number of different companies that will design these newsletters for you, or they have a one size fits all that they'll brand it for you. Or maybe you work at a brokerage that offers something. That's great. Send it out. The biggest mistake I've seen people make in that is like, you know what? I've got to, now nah, I don't like the one my brokerage offers, or you know what? I don't like the way that this one looks over here. I'm going to make my own. And then they spend the next 12 to 18 months trying to build the best, uh, you know, the best newsletter they possibly can, and they never get it out to their clients. Or they're trying to manage the whole thing themselves, and they're not consistent in sending it out every single month. The power is in the monthly touch. Because guess what happens to most? And I know this always hurts us. We spend all this time making this beautiful marketing, or gosh, we you know we we put all this we put a, a, a some sort of a blog together where we're talking about how smart we are and what we know about the market, and oh, this is what's going on, and people just delete it. They just delete it. They don't even look at it. The power for some is in the reading of it. The power in the in the in the majority is the fact that they saw your name, real estate, in their inbox deleted. It went into their head. It went into their reticular activation system. Because here's the thing about a 33 touch: the reason that we're sending them this messaging, the reason that we're calling them and they're hearing our voice, the reason that we're messaging them and we're back and forth is not because we're going to say some magical words that's going to tell them that they should invest in real estate right now or move their family. The idea is, is that we're consistently and constantly reminding them that we do real estate. We practice real estate. We're realtors. We're here. In fact, we have to teach a lot of these folks. We love referrals. We love your referrals. It's all we're reminding them about in all of this so that if they happen to show up to the office, they walk over to the coffee machine to fill their coffee, and one of their coworkers says, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about buying a house. Oh, yeah, my friend Graham, my friend Ryan, my friend Jen, 
my friend Shelly, my friend Trish. They're realtors. You should talk to them. Hopefully they didn't give them all of our names at once. Um, the reality though is that it's it's really about that. It's the constant reminder. It's the constant training of our clients and our database that we would like a referral. You're going to hear from some of your people before. You know, when you start doing this on a regular basis and you start communicating with your sphere on a regular basis, you're going to hear from people sometimes. Ah, you know, I do know somebody, but man, they're a cousin of mine and they're crazy. And I don't want, oh God, I'd feel bad giving them to you. No, 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 no. I work with crazy too. Yeah, I work with crazy too. If I didn't work with crazy, I'd be broke. You know, yeah, you need to remind them that we work with all of their referrals, no matter what price. Sometimes people see you advertising all these beautiful homes online and they think, yeah, they're probably not interested in a $300,000 referral. Yes, we are. We work with all markets. Or they they think the opposite. You put all these two fifty and three hundred thousand dollars starter homes. Maybe their rich uncle who has a two million dollar property on Prior Lake that wouldn't be a good fit for you. You need to remind them of all this. So we're going to do that through all this content. Um, when we look at the quarterly call schedule, okay, I'm going to give you a very very simple way to do this. We call it over here a DTD two. Has anybody heard of that before? Once or twice. What was that, Trish? I said once or twice. Yeah. Believe it or not, this DTD2 system, that's the inner kind of lingo of our company. This has been around for a long time. We didn't create it. Um, it's been around for a long, long time. I've been adopting this for a very long time. And if you see, it will take two letters out of the alphabet. And it will specifically take letters that are not going to be the letters that typically will have the two biggest amount of folks that have those last names, B, you know, and E. It will spread it out so there's some sort of equity between how many people are going to be in this list. And it breaks it into these 12 different groups. Actually, it works out to 13 different groups because there's 26 letters in the alphabet. I know we're realtors that uh, we don't all know that, but there are. There's 26 letters in the alphabet. Uh, and if you break it into half, two, that's 13. Why is it broken into 13? Why is it broken into two letters? Can anybody tell me why? My favorite person, Trish. <laughs> so that you're equally distributed throughout the quarter. That's right. There's 12 weeks in a quarter. This is the closest way to make sure that you are covering your entire database every single quarter, four quarters a year. This is telling you the A and the W in the first week of January is the uh, number. Those are the last those are the, uh, letters of the starting uh, of their last name. You're going to call them. You're going to text them. You're going to direct message them the first week of January to get through all the A and W's in your database. And you're going to text N. If you go and just text four times a year, I tell you, I swear to you, you're not going to get as many leads. You're not going to get as much business. You need to call these folks. You have to call them. At least try one. Just start with one. For all of you that have never called your database, just start with one. You're going to be so surprised how happy they are to hear from you. And I'm not being a smart aleck. You're going to be so surprised. They love talking to you. They want to hear from you. You are a good person. They want to know what's going on in your life. And more importantly, I want to know what's going on in theirs. I'll tell you a sidebar. My consistent calling of my database for the past 20 years has been probably the most honorable thing I've done in real estate. I have been consistently communicating with the people in my database for two decades. I've got to hear about their babies being born, growing up, going off to college. I've heard about marriages happening, marriages ending, life starting, life ending. I've had so many personal stories shared with me. I guarantee you, I would not have that much opportunity to interact with people in such a meaningful way had I not been doing this. There's no way. You know it and I know it. We're not staying that close to too many people. Some of us have three, four, five really close friends. I have thousands of people that have told me more about their lives than their close friends, than my close friends have about theirs. I have notes on this so that when I call them, I can say, hey, Ryan, I know when we talked last quarter, you were having a new baby. How's everything going? Hey, Jen, I, I remember last year you got that new job. We haven't talked about that for a little while. Last few calls, we didn't connect. How, how's the new job going? Is that still in, in, in place? They're going to be like, man, you remember that? 
gosh, even my friends don't remember that. That's the kind of conversations you're going to have. So the DTD2 schedule is there to help you get through your entire database four times a year. Because if you do nothing else in the 33 touch, you just communicate with your database four times a year, you're already going to do more business than you're already doing. I guarantee you that. Grant, now, with can that I being add something? Yeah. Sorry. Um, the other thing this system does is it takes away caller bias. Because I don't know about you, but when I look at my database, I tend to pick those people that I want to talk to and avoid those that I don't. That's right. So this That's takes right. that away. I agree with you. And I do it too. We all do it. There's not an agent in the world that doesn't do it. You kind of go on through the list and then you get to that one person. You're like, oh, no. man, I really don't like them. <laughs> like kind of begs the question, why are they still in your database? Um, but it's up to you what you do there. But yeah, if you just follow this and hit those numbers, especially if you're using an auto dialer, oh my God. Yeah, you, then there is no caller bias. You're calling everybody. I'll tell you, I have countless stories about hitting that call button on somebody that I'm like, ah, oh, they're rough. They're rough to deal with. They're harsh. I don't know. And I called them that day and it was the best conversation. And I got a couple of referrals out of it. It happens, guys. It happens. And, and, I'll, and I'll just add a little bit more to this, why it's so important if you're still kind of skeptical. Has anybody here um, recently bought a new car or can you think back to the time that you did buy a new car? And think back to that time. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, you decided you're going to buy a Volkswagen. And you go to the dealership. You've been looking around. You've been looking at Volkswagen. You go to the dealership. You pick out that one. You get the one you want. You get in the car and you drive home. And then for the next week, what do you see driving all over the highway and the roads? Volkswagens. And you're like, oh, my God, everybody's got a Volkswagen. I bought a Volkswagen now. Everybody bought a Volkswagen? That's not what's going on. All you've been pay paying attention to, you've been focusing on Volkswagens. Now you're seeing Volkswagens everywhere. I'm telling you guys, you focus on lead generation, you're going to see leads everywhere. And you remind your database how to give you leads. You remind them that you do real estate on this regular basis. They're going to come across people in that moment. And remember, you do it. And they're going to be happy to give your name and phone number. Or more importantly, give their name and phone number to you for you to call them. That's why we do this. So we're going to do that. Now, if you want to take that to the higher level, again, I don't want to overcomplicate this. If you want to take this DTD2 to the higher level, you're going to have a CRM. And you're going to go in that CRM and you're going to use filters, tags, whatever your CRM calls it. And you're going to tag everybody in your uh, database with these designators, A and W, B and E, B and O, H and V. So that when it's that week, you can just filter and hit the A and Ws and you know who to call. You want to make this dummy proof as best as possible. If you're not that fancy yet, and you don't have a CRM that does that. Do you have an assistant? Can you hire somebody on an hourly basis that could do this? and present you on Monday with the list that you need to call for the week, that they can go through your database and do this for you. Trust me, it's gonna take them an hour, two hours to figure it out. You pay somebody 30 bucks every week to do that. Maybe it's a maybe it's a, a child, maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's somebody else at your office that's looking to make a little extra money. Go into your database, present that list to you so it's on your desk Monday morning or it's in your email Monday morning and you can just go. You don't have to get in there and start screwing around on trying to find out where everybody's at. We can move on to the next. So in fact, if you go back one, um, 33 touch again, email campaigns and newsletters are a part of it. The key here is we're gonna ask for referrals, okay? Now, before I get to the ask for referrals, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the client events. Client events are gonna be very important. Everybody loves client events. Everybody, your clients love them, you love them. And you know what? One of the things about client events is they can get pretty expensive. You keep doing client events all the time, they can get pretty spendy. I'm going to give you a couple of hacks here that you should take immediately back into your business. Do you have a favorite title person? Do you have a favorite lender? Do you have a favorite inspector? Do you have a favorite contractor? On and on and on and on. Vendor list. Do you have a favorite or people that you use and refer on a regular basis. You are absolutely going to want to remind your vendor referral partners how important they are to you and remind them how many leads you've given to them because you want them to participate in your client events with you. You know why? Because they will end up paying for it. 
And you want to absolutely follow all RESPA rules. You want to talk to your broker to determine and define what's acceptable, what's not. And if there is money exchanging hands, how does it need to exchange hands to be 100% compliant with RESPA laws? You absolutely want to do that. And there are ways that vendors can participate in, in events with you and offset the cost of that event. We consistently will go back to our vendor partners and ask them and encourage them to be a part of this. And if they don't want to be a part of this, they don't have the time or the money to participate, I would challenge you to ask yourself if you should find another vendor partner to fill that slot. I've talked to so many people before about this on title. I have title people that I love. Some of them I love almost like a sister or a brother. But I don't get any referrals from them. My job is to create as much business in this in this business that is the Graham Smith team as possible. Quite honestly, it's my responsibility. I have other uh, title folks that are happy to give us referrals. That's who. That's where my business goes. And I remind everybody about that. I love what you're doing. I'm not asking for all of your referrals. I'm just asking for one. Just one. Let's start with one. I love you. I'm not asking for all your money. I just like you to help me with this one event. If they're not interested in doing that with you, you might want to find somebody else. The world is full of title folks, lenders, insurance brokers, everybody. It's full of them. You're going to find somebody that's going to offer a great product and a great service and want to be a partner with you. You can offset those client events so that you're not paying for them or you're paying a very small portion of them. Now, back to the referrals. Ask for referrals. The entire four communication bits is all about asking for referrals. It's why it's the most important part. Can you pull up a uh, Ford script, by the way? This is the part where everybody says, oh, I don't want to call my friends and family and ask for referrals. It sounds too salesy. Hey, hey, it's not good. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to tell you exactly what to say. Or they say, I don't want to call these people because I don't know what to say. Well, here's what to say. It's called the Ford script. Has anybody heard of that before? Again, this has been around a long time. This is some old school stuff. Ford. It's not the car. It's uh, It stands for friends, family, occupation, recreation, dreams. The Ford script is a way to talk to your database that you're not only not going to sound salesy, you're going to know exactly what to say, and you're going to keep these conversations to five or six minutes or less. See, that's the key, too. When you're talking to a lot of folks every week, you got to get through a ton of folks as part of your job. 15, 20-minute conversations aren't going to get you there. So the Ford script looks like this. Trish, would you indulge me? Turn your mic off. Yep. I'm going to call you, all right? You ready? Oh, yep. Ring, ring. Oh, sh <laughs> Hello, this is Trish. Trish, hey, it's Graham Smith from the Graham Smith team calling. How you doing? Graham, I'm great. How are you? Oh, really good. Really good. Say, I haven't talked to you for a little bit. How's your family? Ah, uh, good, good. Everybody's living their best lives, and we're all living the dream. Yeah, it looks like it. I see a, I see a lot of your posts on social and I see you've been traveling a lot and uh, really having mm -hmm. a great time. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. You know, I haven't yeah. talked to you. It looks like for maybe three or four months. I know last time we spoke, you were talking about some challenges going into the fourth quarter with your job. How did everything shake out for the end of the year? You know, everything's good. I landed in a great place and uh, things are going well. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. And, um, you know, I... Speaking of the traveling, I think the last time I saw one of your posts, you were at the Grand Canyon or someplace. What was that all about? Oh, I, I think I was in Utah. Graham. Oh, yeah, that's I was what doing was. some hiking with my daughter in Utah. Yeah. Yeah. That looked how, amazing. How's, what? How is, how's Bridget and the boys? Oh, they're doing great. They're doing great. Good. And then this is where I would go off into my son yeah. is in college, my others. And, you know, this is, yeah. they're doing fantastic. And just mm -hmm. out of curiosity, you know, as the rest of this year goes on, what other great plans or vacations or uh, goals do you have? Oh, good question. You know, I'm looking at potentially um, purchasing something down in Kansas where my daughter's in school. I need someplace for her to live next year. Bing, bing, bing. Okay, we're going to come back <laughs> to that. Um, we'll pause there. Part of the conversation is we're looking for cues. C-U-E-S, cues. Okay. I'm looking to buy is, you know, that's a, that, that, that's, that's just direct.
But sometimes it's, I, I got a new job. I lost a job. I'm getting married. I'm getting divorced. We had a baby. Our baby moved out of the house. You know, cues that might follow with a real estate transaction. We want to be taking notes about that while we're having this conversation. Okay. At the end of the conversation, if, if we didn't get any cues, we didn't get that. I want to buy something. I want to move. I might say, well, Trish, it's been great catching up with you. You know, I hope the rest of this winter and into the spring goes well. And you know me, I'll be back in touch to, to check up down the road. Is there anything you need from me, you know, this season or any questions you have for, about the real estate market that I can be of service to you? Uh, you know what I'm thinking, Graham, is I've got some, we're thinking about maybe putting new windows in the house. Do you have any Anybody you could recommend for that? This is where I'm going to have a conversation about my vendors. Okay. And I'm only doing this because we're short on time. I do the whole script, but this is where I'd go into conversation with my vendors and share my vendors with, and you would be very thankful for that. You'd be, oh my gosh, thank you. And I'd be, you're welcome anytime, Trish. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Say, before I let you go, this is how you're going to end it every single time. This is the part. Before I let you go, I'm just curious. Do you happen to know anybody that's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the next few months? Uh, not currently, no. Here's the thing. I'm so glad you said that. By the way, guys, 99% of the people are going to say no. They're going to say no. And you know what you're going to do in that moment? You're going to ask that same question in a different way. You're going to say, thank you so much for thinking about that, Trish. That means a lot to me. Thank you. This is the time of year we meet so many people that are going to be selling and buying real estate in the spring. If it's the spring, this is the time of year for the summer. If it's the summer, the fall, this is the time of year we meet so many people that are going to buy and sell in the spring. If you happen to hear of anybody, are you comfortable sharing my name and number with them? Well, only if I can't work with them first. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Getting. I'm not calling realtors on this. Um, I know. I, yes, and you know what everybody's going to say? They're going to say, Graham, I refer everybody to. I'm happy to. I'm happy to. Ryan, absolutely. Every time I hear of real estate, I talk about you. Jen, you're the best. I would never refer to anybody else. They're all going to tell you that. And you're going to thank them and be thankful and then let it go and, and wish them the best and talk to them down the road. And then what's going to happen is a certain percentage of those people that you talk to are going to run into or think about somebody in the next 14 to 21 days. And you're going to get a phone call, an email or a text saying, hey, Jen, it's Trish. I or, or hey, Jen, it's Joe. Trish talked to me at the office and said, I should talk to you because I'm thinking about buying a home. That's how it works, guys. That is exactly how it works. It's nothing else. I'm not telling anybody it's a good time to buy or sell. I'm not telling anybody it's a good time to invest in real estate. I'm not telling anybody they shouldn't rent anymore. I'm not telling anybody you're too old for your house. Move out. Even if I'm thinking all of it. I'm not telling anybody that. I'm having this conversation and I'm listening for cues to see if there's an opportunity for a real estate. Sounds like you would like to be closer to your daughter in Colorado and Utah, wherever it may be. Have you ever thought about what that might look like? Sounds to me like you got a job promotion and that's fantastic for your family. Do you plan on staying in your place for a while or are you thinking about something else? Wow, you're getting married. Awesome. Where are y'all going to live? I'm listening for cues and I'm asking for referrals. And nobody to this day, guys, in 20 years, nobody, and I've got thousands and thousands and thousands of people in my database, nobody has ever said, Damn it, Graham, why are you always asking for referrals? That's the only reason you call me is you want business. You know why they don't say that? Because I don't lead with that. Because I lead with, how can I help you? Would you like access to my vendors who are very trustworthy and fairly priced? Can I give you free information about the market? Oh, you wanted to see a main? You want me to do that for no cost? I'm happy to do it. Want to come to one of my parties? Because I throw pretty cool ones. Free of charge. Guess what? We're giving away tickets to the Timberwolves. Everybody get in line. We'll see who can win them because I'm doing that all the time so that then I can turn around and ask them for a referral and they're happy to give it. There is no better way. And this is where you, every single one of you, I don't care how big or small your business is. Every single one of you can beat out Zillow. Every single one of you can beat out Keller. You can beat out Sotheby's. You can beat out Edina Realty because nobody will have more influence over your sphere of influence than you as long as you feed it. Nobody. I don't care what messaging they're getting from the market. If you're feeding your database, they're going to come to you. I don't care. They could be getting mail. They could be getting email. They could be getting hammered with phone calls. They could be getting invited to parties by Coldwell Banker. It doesn't matter. You are going to be the one that has the influence over what they do in real estate as long as you're feeding them. And I'm going to show you. Let's see where we're at here. 
we got 10 minutes and I want to make sure I cover a couple of things. I'm going to show you something that is going to monetize this down to the penny. Okay. There are some industry standards. We talked about tracking your numbers before. Real quick, before we go into what I'm going to put on this board, are you able to pull up our tracking sheet? All right. This is one little carve out of a section of a giant tracking sheet that we have. It's built in Google Sheets. It's nothing too fancy, but it does the trick. How many contacts? How many leads? How many appointments set? We're tracking these over the month, okay? I set 11 listing appointments in January. I signed six. That doesn't mean five signed with other people, by the way. Still working on a couple. Some aren't going to sell. The reality, though, is that we can close this down. The reality, though, is that we're doing that because we want to track our numbers so we know our numbers, not industry standard numbers. But I'm going to show you industry standard numbers, okay? If you are feeding a database, and guys, if you haven't been doing it ever, it's going to take a little bit of time to build this up, but better start now than never. Typically speaking, 12 to 18 months of feeding the database on a 33 touch, four conversations a year, multiple emails, multiple invitations to events, some uh, mailers. I like handwritten notes, by the way. That's another one you can do. A little handwritten note. Maybe it's around the holidays. Maybe it's around a holiday. Maybe it's a Valentine's Day card just with your signature and card in it. It doesn't matter. It gets mailed to them. You want to do this 33 times a year. As long as you're doing that, as long as you're doing that 33 times a year, industry standard will say, if you have a certain number, let's say you got 200 people in your database. Okay. Let's say you got 200 people in your database. The old numbers used to be 10%. You could count on 20 transactions out of that database per year. Okay. That was the old numbers. On a 33 touch, 45 touch, so many touch. I don't care how many touch. The new numbers are somewhere around 16. It's an eight to one or a six to one. You're going to figure out what your numbers are because they're going to be different. This is just industry standard across the United States. But the reality is if you've got 200 people in your database, you're feeding that database, you should be able to track 16 closings out of that database here. That does not mean 16 people in your database bought and sold with you. It means that due to the efforts that you put into that 33 touch, you got 16 transactions either directly through the people in your database or referrals from them. OK, because everybody knows about four people that are going to do business in the next 12 months. Everybody. You're interacting with them so you can get access to some of that. Now, here's the deal. Those 16 transactions based on industry standards, that's based on averages. Now, you have to imagine if an agent's doing a solid 33 touch or more, they're better than an average agent most of the time. But even within that space, the average agent's doing 16. Could you possibly do 20? Absolutely. But reality the number 16. And if you look back over the last year and you tell yourself, I've got 200 people in my database and I didn't get 16 transactions out of my database, I got five. You left 11 on the table. What's your average commission? And I'm not talking about profit. I'm talking about gross. What's your average commission right now? Well, the average sale price is somewhere around 350 across the metro. It depends on what size business you do. But for most agents, that's going to come to about $10,000. Gross money, by the way. Times 11 transactions. That's $110,000 left on the table. Because I'm telling you guys, that's not a what if and a maybe. Somebody else got that. Some other realtor took that business. It might have been me. How do you like that? Somebody's getting that business. It wasn't you. If you've got 2,000 people in your database. That number should have been 160. Did you have 160 closings? Oh, you had 50. <gasps> you left 110 on the table. What's 110 transactions times $10,000? That's $1.1 million of gross commissions. Could anybody else use another million dollars a year? This isn't pie in the sky numbers. These aren't hypotheticals. This is real. Somebody else got that business. Might've been Trish. Wasn't you. Somebody else got it. And we all are guilty of this, even myself, because we look at our numbers all the time. Like, oh, man, we left 20 on the table. Who got those? How dare they? Somebody got them. Wasn't us. When you look at the return on this investment, I showed you a 52 times return. It begs the question, why would I invest any dollar, any time in anything else until I've mastered this? You're never going to get more than a two or three times investment in Zillow. You're not going to get a better investment than that in most things. 
Why would you do anything other than this? If you tell me social media, fine, make social media serve this. If you tell me reels and, and posts and other things, great, make it serve this. Make sure you're taking all those people you're communicating with, getting them into a database, getting them on that database, having conversations so you can collect that data that you're missing, get their email, get their home address. Guess what? We all have access to the tax reports for crying out loud. If you know their name, there's a chance you can figure out where they live. Put the address in. Get it, get it, get it. Lastly, before we wrap this up, we've got five minutes left. Where did we leave off on that slide, Alyssa? Oh, we're kicked out. I think we got kicked out of the, uh, we got kicked out. Oh, there we are. Good. Um, you're going to hear endless objections. My people don't want to hear from me that often. Nonsense. If they don't want to hear from me that often, it's because you're not saying the right things. I don't know what to say. Great. Use the Ford script. It's that simple. It's a way. Well, that sounds scripty. Well, don't sound scripty then. Be genuine. Well, I don't know how to do that without sounding scripty. Great. Pick somebody and practice scripting with them. Guess what? We script practice on my team twice a week on the phone. The whole team does it early in the morning. We knock the dust off. We kind of run ideas by each other on things to say. We stumble so that we don't stumble with our people. Well, you know, I just, I've always done it this other way. Great. Keep doing it that way. But I'm telling you, those numbers are real. Those are based on industry standards across brokerages, across the United States, across time. Somebody's getting that business out of your database. It is the fastest way, the cheapest way, and the easiest way. And quite honestly, the best way. It's the most fun. I would much rather work with somebody I know in my database or a referral from them than somebody that found me online. Now, I'm going to work with those folks that found me online too, because I want to Close as much business as possible. Most of us are pretty competitive. But the reality is, it's more fun to work with your database. It's more fun to work by referrals. Because that person that found you online, that person that found you because you had a really cool reel or they joined a seminar, trust me, they're always shopping realtors. You may or may not be their realtor next time. And often, they're always shopping the lowest rate. Referrals rarely do. They came highly recommended. Sometimes they're embarrassed to shop. It. Not always. Sometimes they do but sometimes they are. You're going to find you're going to be able to charge a higher rate, do better business, and, and, and get a vast, 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 vast higher return on your investment. So all those obligate, all those objections you have that you've heard from others, maybe there's another agent in your office, an old timer sitting there, you know, talking about, yeah, I don't do that. Never did that. That's cheap. I'm not a, I'm not a vacuum cleaner salesman. You know, I'm not a telemarketer. If I don't be fine, whatever. Believe it. Believe that if you want to. I'm telling you, you will not do as much business as you are potentially able to do. Every single one of you has a database that's big enough that you could be doing way more business than you're currently doing. Way more. And we could all use more business, especially in this time. So if you find yourself in that space where you're questioning, you're in good company. We all do it. I still do it too. Eh, they don't want to hear from me. Yes, they do. Hit the button. Manage your mindset however you see fit. If you're not surrounded by the right people in the space that you're at, you might want to change your space. If you're getting interrupted all the time when you're trying to do this, you might want to put some boundaries around you so you can have a systematic, systemic um, and a uh, strategic lead gen policy. But I just highly recommend adopt any of those practices and you're going to see an increase in your business. You'll be surprised. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if you told me about it. And I'd love to hear about it down the road. If something like that happens, like, oh my God, I said those things you said to say, and then I got a referral. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's really awesome. That's all I have. I'm open to questions. Um, anything that anybody wants to add to what we've talked about? This was fantastic. Thank you, Graham. Oh, thank you. That's kind of you. I agree. Great information, Graham. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Jen. Anybody else have any questions or uh, or commentary to add? Any strategies they think that would be helpful? There's not one way to do this. Okay, we'll end it there. I really want to thank you all for joining today. Um, and feel free to email me. Feel free to message me or call me. You can call me uh, if you have any other questions about this afterwards. Thank you.